Hi everybody. So it's Dr. Tamu Petra Brown of Coaching by Tamu and Innovative Education and Training Solutions. And I haven't been on for a while. It's been a difficult um, few weeks for me. I was really under the weather. Um, but I feel okay now, so I'm on. And today I really want to hear from you. So if you've received a notification about the live, do submit your questions either in here directly or hop on the live. So I'll wait a little bit and I'll also be checking for questions on, you know, I'll use my tablet to check for questions in the DMs. So you can, you know, submit your questions there as well. I see some questions already coming in because I know it was short notice, but you know, I have to do things when I have the time and the energy to do them. So hi, Jaden, Ozzy, hey Joy. So thank you for joining. Boop, boop, boop. All right. <laughs> okay, so Joy, do you want to go live with me? All right, good. Let's see how to go. Okay, I'm waiting for you. It says waiting for you. I hope you're dressed properly, you know. Can you hear me, Joy? Hi. Good mo good afternoon, rather. Good afternoon, Joy. We can see you because all the glare is behind you. Oh my gosh! So we have. Hi everyone. You. Hi. So she is a serial entrepreneur, and if you hear any noise in the background, it's my son being loud, loud, and the phone being louder. Sorry, Caribbean life. <laughs> So Joy is a serial entrepreneur, um, multiple businesses. Joy also was part of my very first cohort of Jumpstart Your Business in 90 Days when it was, you know, I just had an idea to do it. And she That's jumped right. on it. And she's always, you know, awesome in terms of supporting me. So thank you, Joy. So Joy, tell us about your businesses and tell us about the question that you have. Hi, Official Blessing, I see your question. Hi, Sassy V. All right, go ahead, Joy. Hi, um, well, I am an entrepreneur of several ventures. I am a certified cosmetologist. I also have a bar and grill, which is located up on Market Street in Bastia St. Kitts. And I also do gifts, baskets as well. However, my question for you, Doc, is that um, with all the COVID-19 setbacks and what have you, for preparation going forward to 2021, I decided to take a different approach. And my different approach is to go door to door to market um, myself and one of the questions that is like bothers me more than anything else is like how do one get assistance in getting to do a mobile business in terms of buying a vehicle okay so I have well a half an, a half an answer for you so here's my answer well number one I would be very hesitant in going into debt right now for a vehicle. So what I would do is I would hire a mobile um, advertising company. And it just so happened that um, Butterfly Media, who is in my Level Up Ladies cohort this, this year, um, Felista Webb, she does that motor mouse service. So that's one thing that you could do because, you know, for me to invest, well, this is the second part. The second part is that if you do invest in a vehicle, 
um, it could be really helpful for you because you have services that can be entirely mobile, right? So you can do your food delivery mobile, your gift baskets mobile. You can even do a mobile um, hair and beauty service if you wanted to. So I'm really liking that, um, you know, context there. I'm, I'm liking it. Now, what I might do is um, I realize that the credit unions, they are almost like giving away money, <laughs> basically, because the economy, you know, hasn't been turning and people haven't been borrowing. And as you know, that's how they make their money. So you might want to check with the credit unions for your loan. But before you even go to them, if you're going to go for a vehicle loan, you as a self-employed person, you know it's always really difficult to get a loan. So before you even attempt to go, make sure that you have your record. Make sure that you have been depositing into a business account. So if you don't have a business account, then begin one. So it might be like six months, like if you don't have any of these things in order, you might have to have like a six month window and in that six months you want to have opened your um, business account. You want to begin depositing even if whatever you make, everything you make into it so that they have a record. You want to retroactively, if you haven't been keeping record, go back and use like wave books or fresh books or any of those things. And you can retroactively create your records. Go back, because I know you keep records, but you maybe keep them in books or receipts or that kind of thing. So just go back, put a, you know, create a, a fresh books or a wave apps account, which is like an online accounting software, and it's free. And then recreate your um, earnings for the past like two years. Just go back in and put in put in put in the thing so that you have something to show them. So the third approach I would take, Joy, is that I would get a secondhand vehicle from someone and take advantage of a loan that is not an auto loan. Right? I might take advantage of a loan like that for a vacation loan or something like that. So for instance, I see that one of the credit unions has 10,000 US, I believe it is, for a vacation loan. So you can take a loan for another purpose, get the cash in hand, and then buy it as a negotiation, as a secondhand um, purchase. So one, this is how I would do it in order. Joy writing, she know. Okay, Joy, <laughs> So in order, well, you, had to, well, you me, had to put me on the spot. <laughs> I'm looking at your page is turning. So in order, and remember your body replay, but in order, I would hire the motor mouth service, right? For us, see how much it is, see if it's in your budget, contact Alyssa, she's Butterfly Media on here. Now, the reason I would do that first is because you still want to have some awareness and generate some sales while you are setting up for what might be next, right? So I'll do that first. Then the very next thing is to get that business account open and begin retroactively creating your accounts on one of those online software things, Wave Apps, FreshBooks, etc. See if you could go back to at least two years as best as you can. As best as you can, right? Right? Okay. And maybe two, two, the two years before COVID, not including the COVID year. Some of the COVID year, nobody yeah. was making money. So at least two yeah. years before that. Then mm -hmm. from now on, you begin depositing every little cent into that business account. I would say <laughs> with the credit union because they give loans much more easily right so with the credit union whether it's first federal or think it's cooperative credit union doesn't really matter okay. then you want to consider once you're in there and you you know you want to have have a an appointment about an automotive loan just just get an appointment so you can find out from them 
at both credit unions what it is they require. And you're not actually taking the loan, you're just taking the information. Because what you want to do is look at what they're telling you and then decide if it's smarter and easier to take a loan that is for like vacation or consolidating debt or something like that, that doesn't have so many things tied to it, right? And you buy a second hand vehicle. So those are like the three or four steps I would take. And I really like that idea. I think that's an awesome idea, Joy. Thank you. All right, I'm going to the next question. Bye. <laughs> Bye. All right, people. I ain't know how to take off this joy. So see if you could take it off for me. Thank you. All right, so I have a question. So let me see who's in the room. Let me just say hello. Thanks, Joy. We have official Blessedina. And if you want to join live, just send a live request. We have Veronica Hey, Jumpstart Alarm. We have Shades of Africa in Jamaica. Hi, how are you, Tanya? We have, did I say official Blessedina? Yes. Hi, Winiel. Hi, Javan. How is Taiwan? Hi, Belair, another Jumpstart participant. Hello, the Ambitions Club. And so let's go. So that was good, right? I think we learned a lot from Joy's call. Okay, so I have a message from Blastina. Now watch here. Remember, coaching is plenty money. So if you have the ability to ask a question, ask a question. All right, so Belia, you have a request. So I'll um, get to your live request after Blastina's question because it came a long time ago. All right, so Blastina asks me, what's a good way to know whether you should continue to invest in yourself and or your business, or if you should just use what you have and forge ahead as you try to make the best use of your finances? How do you determine that? Well, <coughs> Blastina, I'm always saying until you have proof of concept or until you validate your uh, business idea. So like in your case, you are a, a, a performer, a singer, singer so and so, you know, so performer, and I believe a songwriter. What you want to do is take the strategies that you know or seek out strategies, book a consultation, Blistina, book a consultation, and so that you can get guidance. But then you don't want to invest anymore. The investment should be things that are specifically tied to the bottom line of your business. What you're trying to do in the early stages, Blastina, at this point where you are, because I know you as an email um, coaching client, what you need to do is A, you need to finish the things I told you to do, Blastina. And two, you need to create a strategy for visibility and monetizing. And so what you're doing is testing testing your price in the market, testing um, how often people book you. So I would say at this point, you want to perhaps limit your investment to put a cap on it, put a cap on it. Say, I'm going to invest, I don't know what your budget is, but say 400 to $500 for the quarter, right? And decide what are the steps that I need to take to get me where I want to be and decide how best to invest that 500. So let's say that you need a, a, a strategy plan or a game plan. So maybe you need coaching or maybe you need a class. Let's say you need to um, pull up a, a, a website, right? You need a website so that people can book you. Right, because that's important because booking gives and websites they give visibility and revenue. So, some of your 500 it will go there. So, in a nutshell, Blastina, you I'm never gonna say don't invest in yourself because, in order to be the best in your field, you have to invest in yourself. However, in the context of COVID and limited resources, you need to cap. Uh, the budget per quarter and then decide how you're going to spend that based on your goal. 
So don't throw lots of money into what is now like testing and measurement. This phase is like research and development for you. But you have to make some moves. You have to begin working with the resources that you do have as effectively as you can. All right? So let me know in the DMs if that um, will work for you. I think the cap is a good thing. And setting the goal, so you might say, I want to have five bookings by the quarter. And what is going to help you get those five bookings? Then that's what you spend money on. All right, Belier. Here we go. I'm waiting for you. And then I see Veronica Sassy V Clutches. I'll, I'll come to you. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, hi. <laughs> You're here looking hot, girl. Well, I had a speaking engagement this morning. This is my foot for the month. Oh, look at that. Jump start your business alum doing it big. Yes, yes, yes. And not just small companies. I'm doing international as well. <laughs> well, you know, if you haven't done jump start your business, you need to get on that. Yes, yes. <laughs> So how can I help you? Okay, so I've been wrestling with the the challenge of pricing. I know before you you, you mentioned you know you have to incorporate um, you know your wardrobe those kind of things. I'm still struggling with it because sometimes when I price persons like I have managers that said to me, "Clarissa, said this is not this is below what we really should be paying you." So the fact that they're saying that means that I need to revamp and re go back to you know my original pricing scale. So I just wanted to get the rundown so I could make some notes as to, you know, what all should I really include in my pricing? All right. So that is a coaching question. So I'll answer that for you privately. Okay. But um, what I can tell you to do, so Clarissa gets that private response because, you know, she has invested in me. So anybody else, they got to pay for that. But... Um, what I can tell you and that will be helpful for everyone is that for me, I like to ask budget, right? So in the discussions before I give my proposal, I like to ask, what's your budget? So that I can get a handle on um, what they're willing to spend. Now, if what they're willing to spend is more than I was expecting to charge, awesome. If what they're willing to spend is the less than I was expecting to charge, then I reduce or pull out some of the things that they were going to get for the money. So for instance, if someone wanted me to speak for an hour and they said or lecture or whatever for an hour, and let's say, these are hypothetical numbers, let's say that I was going to charge $2,500, let's say. And then they come back and tell me that their budget is a thousand. Remember, they don't know what I was going to charge. What I do is I give a proposal with an option A and an option B. So the option A fits their budget, but I can't speak for an hour for that money, right? So they'll get maybe 45 minutes of my time and maybe a workbook or something like that for their thousand dollars. Because if that's what they have to spend, I value that but this is what they can get. Then I include the option B with all the bells and whistles, which is what my budget was in my head. My price point was in my head. So that way they have some choice. And because they see the extra value that you're giving now in that option B, which was the price in your head, right? Generally, they're going to go with that because they're like, whoa, I want all of this. I want that, you know thing I want these topics I want this follow-up so that's a good way I always I never disclose my price I never write a proposal well at least in the beginning I didn't now I'm at the kind of place where whatever I ask I get but it wasn't always like that <laughs> you know I had to work my way up to that so that's what I would do so, you know you're having that conversation you want to ask budget then you want to prepare that option A and B. And listen, 
even if the, the, the budget that they quoted was more than you had intended to charge, that becomes your new option A, <laughs> right? And option B goes higher than that, or if not higher, um, then maybe not for the same thing, but you might want to say, I can do this for you over the next three months. You might want to put a, a higher price package together. So does that help? Yes, it does. All right. Somebody said they can't see the live, but I don't know. Everybody, if you're seeing the live, put a heart in for me. All right, you know, man, I know how to take off the live. So see you coming. Okay, bye. Tell Thanks. me about your business. <laughs> <laughs> so I do empowerment, motivational, inspirational coaching. We empower and trigger persons to walk in their purpose. We help them to, you know, sharpen and develop their talents, their natural born given talents to be able to inspire and, and empower others. So that's the layer for you. Jump start your I business. I told you, I'm them. working. I'm working. Yes. I'm going from a nine to five. I am working on the air. That's right. All right. Yes. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> okay. Sassy V Clutches asks me, listen, if you want to ask a question, ask it in the, the comments or hit me up in the DM. I'm looking at my DMs too. So, Sassy V Clutches, Veronica, do you want to come on live or do you want me to ask the question? So, Veronica is asking, um, oh, no, Veronica, it's Veronica's feed has dropped, right? We are on. It's your feed. So, my son is washing dishes, so that's all the noise, deal. Okay. Oh, okay, she's back on. You, <laughs> all right, Sassy B, Veronica, you want to come on live or you want me to ask your question? So while we wait on Veronica to answer, hi, Winiel, greetings to you as well. Um, let me know if you think that my advice is, is you know, useful while I wait on um, Sassy B. Yes, yeah, Sassy B, you're back. You want to come on the live or you want me to ask your question for you? So let me know. So while we wait for Veronica's response, of course, you know, you can get, oh, she says she's not dressed. Okay. You can get customized um, coaching with me by booking a one-on-one. -on -one. We also have so many resources. Coaching by Tamu is full of resources, on-demand classes, um, virtual life programs, so many things happening, right? And so you can go to the link in the bio on Instagram and you can, re you know, fill out that customized form and I will look at it and something will come out to you giving you some options, right? Um, based on your challenges, your budget, etc. So Sassy V is naked, she says. So let me go back up for her question. Marketing, how do I market more as a fashion brand? All right, so that question is just too broad, and this is why, and this is why I provide customized solutions, right? Because how you market is a function of what your goals are. And so you have to set some goals that are in alignment with your strategy in order to determine the best marketing route. So for instance, what do I mean by that? Now, if your goal is to be a regional brand, how you market will be different, right? If that's your strategic goal. If your strategic goal is to be an international brand, how you market will be different. If your goal is to have retailers stock your product, that's business to business. And so how you market will be a function of that. So I can't really answer that question for you, Veronica, because it requires some more, hi Blanche, it requires some more, I need some more insights, number one. 
and you need to establish a strategic goal by which we can align your other activities. But I would say that the first step in marketing more is the setting of the strategic goal. So I can't tell you, like, do more Facebook, do more social media, do more. I can't say that because I don't know what your strategic intent is. So once I know your strategic intent, then we can speak about critical success factors to get there. Then we can talk about marketing in the context of your strategic intent. So I know that you're supposed to be booking a one-on-one -on -one soon, and so we can really work on that strategic intent. So before you come for your one-on-one, -on -one, really begin considering what is my strategic intent, goal, and impact, right, intention for Sassy V Collectibles, and then all decisions should be made in the context of that. So I know maybe that's what you wanted, but that's how we go. Hey, Blanche. Blanche is joining us from, I believe is um, Florida. So hi, how are you? Now remember, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask them. Let's see who's talking in the chat there for me. Mm -hmm. All right, so Veronica says she understands, right? Blanche is joining us from Orlando, and Blanche is also an awesome entrepreneurship guru. So you want to get onto Blanche's page, Blanche the Blanche Greer, and check out what Blanche um, has going on with entrepreneurship. And she's also working with diversity for um, in the context of Caribbean employees for expat managers. And I have my other coachee, Shades of Africa from Jamaica. Shades of Africa is known for like art couture type work with African fabric and um, made to order pieces, customized pieces. And she has global recognition and global clients and so visit Shades of Africa's page in order to see what Shades of Africa has going on. So nobody has any more questions? Okay, well, if you don't have any more questions, I have something I want to talk about, but if you do think of a question, make sure you type that in there. And if you joined late, you really should watch the replay because I spent quite some time with Joy, who is an alum of Jumpstart Your Business in 90 Days, my 90-day accelerator program. And we had quite a chat about a number of things like securing loans, diversifying other types of marketing, etc. So I must say that was interesting. So you, you should, she was um, top there. And so you definitely should replay it to watch that. But what I want to talk about is I want to talk about the importance of data in decision making. And Veronica, this is good for you too, um, to listen to this, Sassy P. Clutches, right? The importance of data. And when we think about data in decision making, we often think that it is a space or it is something that is only suitable for very large corporations, right? Big business. When you talk about data, you're thinking big business have people to, um, you know, I can uh, have people to, you know, think their data, etc. right? Hey, data comes in many forms and once you are breathing and once you are in business you have data and oftentimes we are making decisions i don't know what we're making decisions based on we're making decisions based on how we feel what we friends say sometimes you're going to coaches not me eh because me i am a data-driven coach ask anybody who coach with me when 
you going to people and they're giving you advice or you are making steps and you're not doing it based on anything. It's like throwing confetti in the air and wondering where it will land. So what are some of the data pieces that even small businesses have? Well, we all know about the data analytics when it comes to social media and looking at your posts and seeing what engagement you have. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you never know that, okay, good. But more importantly, you need to look at your revenue data, your sales data. And you have to be really um, cognizant of keeping the records. Who is buying? What are they buying? How often are they buying, right? And where are they from? Also, there is data that we are not capturing. Let me back up this as well. When I say about who, the who, it's like, you know, because, you know, in business, I always saying this, if you've watched anything I've said, I said this a million times, um, business is hypothesis until it hit the market. So in your mind, you thought that your customer archetype or ideal customer would be a middle-aged person between the age, you know, who living in the Caribbean. But when you put your product or service on the market, actually, it's younger people, perhaps, right? And so you want to make a note of that. You want to make a note of who. So what are the characteristics of the people who are actually buying from you? What are they buying? When do they tend to buy? Is your business seasonal, right? And where are the opportunities, right? And this is the data that we need that we don't often collect. So you know when opportunities are, when people asking you, you just do this, you got this, you ever think about this, eh? Hey. right? That is data. So data is not always the explicit data that we are capturing, but data is also the anecdotal and informal sentiments of the people who are already our customers. And why is this important? It is important because the data shows that it is the current customer that gives you most your money if you know how to nurture that customer along the customer journey. So we spend a lot of time, hey, Nama, we spend a lot of time looking at new customers. New customers are good and we want new customers, but it is harder to get a new customer and it is harder to get a new customer to spend at the price point of an old customer. Ain't it, Namo? Right? Hey, <laughs> somebody asked me for your info today, Namo, so I gave it to them, right? So a Georgette might reach out to you. So Nama's on here. This is a good example. So I'm going to use Nama, right? So Nama started coming to my workshops, right? And my workshops were like $80 to $100. And I had a whole series of them. This was in 2019, I believe, because 2020 was a missing year, right? 2020, right? So um, she started coming to all my workshops. So this is a new customer. Nama was new, right, to me, new to me. So Nama kept coming, but guess what? Then Nama started to level up. If I have something for $300, Nama does a so. <laughs> Nama, Nama's there, right? Then I have something for $3,000. So Nama was part of that level up ladies first cohort. And the price point is well over $3,000 for the six months. And Nama was there. It is highly unlikely that you are going to get a client right off the bat at that $3,600 or $4,000 price point until you become the guru of your space, right? So your, your, your data lies in what your current clients are telling you that they want, what they're not seeing. So Miss D is not on here. So, oh, Nama does cake artistry. Check out Namara's Cafe. 
And Nama has the most authentic because Nama, you know, lived in Africa, etc., Tanzania. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and she has authentic African fabric and she's doing business here. She's doing business in Trinidad. Nama Worldwide. Nama has an eatery. Nama doing the do. Okay? So check out Imara's Designs and Namara's Cafe. Right? So, you know, I have to big up the people who invest big. Right? And so the thing is that there is data. That data is that non-explicit or formal data. Right? So that data is the query. That data is the concern from your existing customers. That data is what you also need to pay attention to. So data is not always in spreadsheets, but data is in sentiment. Mm. Data is in sentiment because it is sentiment that tells you what it is people want, what their pains are, right? Because they're telling you, boy, I wish you did so and so because, you know, nobody is doing that. Or do you do so and so? But we are so focused on the spreadsheet, pie chat, you know, QuickBooks data, not that you need to disregard it because I just said previously why it's important, but that other non-formal data is important. Also, data from people making inquiries. Like people may hear about you and ask, they're new, right? So now we move from the regular client who will always level up in spending to the new client who is saying, you know, I, I thought that, um, let's say Sassy V, I, you know, I would love for my daughter to be able to make bags. I would love for her to have these skills. And maybe she's, but, you know, she's, she's gone around and five, six, seven people have said the same thing. She should be taking their information down. She should be asking them, really? Well, how, what kind of class you would want? For Joe, well, how much you would be willing to pay? Okay, uh, you know what? I might put together something for you. So, you know, let me get back to you. And then she gets back to them with a little idea. And then she say, you know, I, I could build this out, you know, and thing if you're willing to put on a deposit, a registration fee. Because once people are willing to put down their money, you know they're serious, right? And so this is the sentiment data, which we, you know, um, in the business call customer insight and customer inquiry, right? This is the type of customer inquiry that you should be doing. And this is the type of data that is actionable. So the question is, as I wrap up today, is are you making data-driven decisions? And if you're not making data-driven decisions, why aren't you? And if you are not, you need to begin. Otherwise, you are just, you know, throwing around confetti. So that's it for me. I'm going to try to be more, you know, regular on here. You know, I'll try. Um, but sometimes my energy doesn't allow it, and sometimes my time doesn't allow it. So we'll see. So I had a lot of fun today. So you know what y'all can do for me? Hit me up in the DMs and tell me what's a topic that you would like to be covered next time. Actually, tell me in the comments now, and I'll, I'll jot them down in my little note thingy. What you want me to talk about? I ain't getting the free coaching, eh? Hi, Kiana. So, Ibu Store is here. Kiana was my entrepreneurship student when I was a lecturer at CFBC. And Kiana was the co-designer of, actually, my cousin, Kachula Skeet, who is a Grammy Award, not Grammy, what it is, um, Ibu, tell me, Emmy, Emmy Award winning stylist for, um, Good Morning America, I think. I think it is, right? And they dressed her for the red carpet when they were just students in my class in um, CFB. 
Imagine that. And now Kiana has her own lingerie brand. Kiana, I need a bra with um, like wire. I can't do that other thing that you're doing. What you? <laughs> so this is some data. I need I need some support. You know you you know. Um, maybe I'm not in your target market. <laughs> Robin, yes. And I'm a Robin on Good Morning America. So Kiana says, Ibel Store says, yes, I've taken so much of what you taught me into my business. I'm glad to hear that. Those classes were rocking. They were hot. And, you know, uh, most of you are actually in business now. Yes, Nama says she saw the dress live back in 2016. Yeah, those were my girls. Yes, it was on fire. I really it was, you know. So check out Ibel's store. Um, Kiana is laughing about like I need I need boob support. I can't I can't do the Ibel store clothes, right? So that's some data for, <laughs> some data for you, Kiana. <laughs> right but i must say that your aesthetic your marketing i mean the the workmanship on 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 the lingerie really good i really like the diversity in your marketing campaign and you know you're ultra talented so i'm not shocked so one more call going if you have something that you want to <laughs> Good, you're taking that data, yes, for the, the not-so-perky, booby women, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, if you have something that you want me to talk about next time, tell me in the comments, send me a DM, because it makes my life easier now than me have to come up with the things. So this is data. So if you tell me what's on your mind and what will help you, then I can address it, all right? So Sassy be saying, yes, all the data. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We could probably talk about data some more, because data is important. So that's it, y'all. I'm gone. I'm, you know, going to try to do some other things before my energy saps for the day. So hit me up in the DM. For those of you on the replay, thank you for watching on the replay. For those of you that joined late, you should watch the replay. So it's, we had some good stuff going on early on, some good questions. We had two people join us live. Two of them are from Jumpstart Your Business in 90 Days, one from Cohort 1, one from Cohort 2. My people are on here. So just check out the link in the bio. Click, you know, fill out the intake form. Let's see how we can work. Let's see how I can provide you with resources that can grow not just your business, but your mindset. See you. It's Temu.